Hello and welcome to Baghdad, the capital of Iraq. Welcome to this exclusive interview with Iraq's Prime Minister, Haider al-Abadi. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you very much for welcoming us. Well, thank you and thank you for your uh, audience. Mr. Prime Minister, uh, the east of Mosul has uh, fallen. Now everybody is wondering when the offensive to retake the remainder of the city will take place. There are speculations. It's going to be very soon, maybe mid-February. Well, it's supposed to start now. And when do you expect, because Mosul is obviously an important uh, step, when do you expect Daesh to be eradicated from Iraq? We have almost now crushed Daesh militarily in Iraq. I mean, this remaining uh, 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 small area is very small. We have another area, which is a small area, Hawija, and another one, which is a small area uh, bordering Syria, in the Al Ambar province. These are very small, and we would have crushed Daesh militarily. Uh, and uh, we have already done doing this, and we have done it. The challenge is the terrorism of Daesh, terrorism of ISIL, very dangerous. This is worldwide, not only Iraq, and it needs all the support and cooperation of the world. We have, working, we have been working with other countries in the International Coalition and other countries outside the International Coalition to combat terrorism of Daesh. We have terrorist suicide bombers coming from almost 100 countries in the world to Syria, to Iraq, to fight and to kill uh, innocent civilians. So you're expecting that within a free month, Iraq will be free of ISIS? That is our plan. The leader of ISIS, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, where is he? Uh, I'm not going to indulge into I imagine that, but you have an idea. Uh, but I can tell you, uh, we have uh, killed and eliminated most of his aides. He's almost alone at the moment. In Mosul? He, he doesn't have many people to trust. He is in isolation. We are monitoring his movement. He is very prof low profile. His communication with other uh, terrorists is very low, and many uh, times it is almost non-existent. If I say he's still in Mosul, I'm not wrong. I'm not commenting on this. After Mosul, uh, there's a big question of what happens. Obviously, uh, ISIS did not appear in a vacuum. There are lots of grudges, especially in the Sunni areas of, of Iraq, especially the Al-Ambar uh, province. Uh, do you think this may be a bigger challenge than actually winning militarily in Mosul for the future of Iraq? It was, but we have reached out to the people. They are fighting alongside the Iraqi security forces. They are welcoming them. Uh, they are inviting them to liberate their areas. And as, as you see now in Al-Ambar and in Nainawa, the population and the local people are fighting alongside our own security forces. Uh, what is our strategy, which is a departure from previous strategy, is for the army not to stay in the cities, for the army to help liberating the cities and to hand over security in the cities to the local police, to the local authority. This is the new strategy which we have been following all along. In al Ambar has been very successful and in Nenawa, but this necessitated uh, training the local police, and we have started with this massive program. So far, we have trained something like in the range of 10,000 local police. We are continuing with this uh, training program of local police because local police, is, uh, they are trained to deal with people, with the security of people. Military are trained to fight, not to govern cities. Right, but there's the issue of the so-called popular mobilization units, the so-called Shia militias, uh, they've been present, not in Mosul, because I believe there was a decision made not to have them intervene, but uh, they're present. Now they want to control the border between Iraq and Syria. Will they be allowed to do that? Well, they don't want to anything. I mean, they're, under they're saying the, this. Well, some of them, some of them are saying this, but I have to differentiate between two areas here. We have the PMF, Public Mobilization Force, which is an Iraqi official entity under the command of the commander in chief, who is the prime minister. This is by law. And, and in fact, do and, they respond? Well, they do. They do. They abide by that. There are others probably who are outside the PMF, which is, are not governed by the PMF. This is a challenge. And we are telling everybody this is not allowed. This is against the constitution. That's why we went all this long, this way, to legislate this legislation to make a very clear distinction 
there are people who are under the control of the state, and if there are people who are carrying arms outside the control of the state, they are outlaws. This is according to the Iraqi constitution. No one is allowed to carry arms unless they are under the control of the state. And you're going to implement this? I think everybody, we, we have now the, the legal framework to do this, and it must be implemented. We're not fighting Daesh because we dislike these people, dislike their, their faces. We are fighting Daesh because they are terrorizing the community. They are terrorizing the citizens. They are killing innocent people. They are outlaws. And we're going to fight whoever is outside the, the framework of human rights and respect for human rights. In addition to the Shia militias, there's obviously another component, uh, the Kurdish fighter, the so-called uh, Peshmergas. They've made advances uh, during uh, this offensive, and now they're saying, well, we're not going to withdraw from the areas where we're in, this obviously poses a problem for the central uh, government. What are you saying to the Kurds who are saying, this is our land, we're not going out? Well, there's an agreement. Is there? That, yes, there's an agreement before we start the offensive to liberate Mosul between the KRG, the Kurdish regional government, and the Iraqi federal government that we work together. They help Iraqi security forces in liberating Mosul. On this basis, the, there is a, a, an agreement and cooperation for Iraqi security forces to go through the KRG, and they've launched their offensive from the KRG area for the first to time. Mosul for the first time. They've been working with the Beshmarga, and the Beshmarga has helped as well uh, into facilitating the advance of the Iraqi security forces. By doing so, the Beshmarga has moved some kilometers to help the Iraqi security forces, but the agreement was for they to return back to the, their previous positions. But they're, not, they're saying we're not going back. Well, no, I think President Barazani has said publicly he would respect this agreement. They will go back to the original uh, line uh, where they have started on the, before the 17th of October. Uh, and for, to, to, to run these areas or the other areas, which are they call disputed areas, we have to run it together. We've agreed that we start with a pilot scheme in Sinjar and other areas to run between Iraqi security forces and Beshmar get together to provide security to the population. So you don't expect violence between the central government and Kurdistan? No, we have to move away from this. This is, we have to put it in our back. No fighting between Arabs and Kurds. No fighting between Shia and Sunni. We decided that we should work together to safeguard everyone, to provide security. If we work together, we provide security, we provide services to the people, and we are serving the people then. I want to get to uh, Donald Trump, uh, the new uh, president. Uh, he took a number of measures uh, that have an impact here in Iraq, most famously his so-called travel ban against seven Muslim majority uh, countries, including Iraq, which happens to be the only country among the seven who has a full diplomatic relations with the United States. The parliament here has called for Iraq to retaliate. Some important leaders have said so, but you don't want to retaliate. What is your reaction to this ban? Do you consider this, first of all, a Muslim ban? Well, this is, has, was discussed uh, inside the Iraqi National Security Ministerial Council uh, in full. And I think we are discussing steps. So far, we are still awaiting a new policy of the new administration. Uh, Mr. Trump has, in my telephone conversation with him, when he was, uh, before he took office, when he was elected, he promised that he will keep on supporting Iraq against terrorism. And he said the level of support will not only continue, but will increase. We are still waiting for this. As to this banning of uh, certain nationals from entering the United States, I would respect any action for any government to provide security to their own nation and to their own country. So you agree? No, no. What I'm saying is this is a right for every country, but there is no right for any country to humiliate other nations. You feel humiliated? Iraqi, Iraqi citizens and Iraqi public has been the subject and the victims of terrorism. There are many thousands suicide bombers who came from all over the world to kill innocent Iraqis inside Iraq. Are you calling on the administration to exempt Iraq from this list of seven countries? Are you calling for this? Uh, what I'm saying, we should not move towards a blanket ban on a whole nation. Uh, your, every country has a right to investigate, 
to look carefully into would-be immigrants, but to just place a blanket on a country and on a nation. So you I, I don't agree with it. You want it to be yes. reversed. Uh, Donald Trump also made some declarations. He speaks quite a lot every day, one must say. Uh, he even mentioned when he went to the CIA, uh, maybe the fact that America should have kept uh, the oil, uh, the spoils of war. Uh, this is how he said it, and said, oh, maybe we'll get another chance. And this created some uh, questioning, I imagine maybe some indignation here in Iraq that America maybe had designs to, again, seize Iraq's oil. What is your reaction to that? Well, they like oil for, for Iraqi people. And uh, I don't judge designs. I judge uh, facts on the ground. Nobody has the power and nobody has the ability to take over Iraqi oil. Iraqi oil is now fully under the control of the Iraqi government and the Iraqi oil for the Iraqi people. So There is no departure from that whatsoever. So this declaration is unacceptable? Uh, I think the president's talking about the past and the past is the past. That uh, is talking about what happened in 2003, the havoc which was created uh, due to the invasion and placing Iraq under occupation. I would call for full investigation into that era. What happened? Why many thousand suicide bombers were allowed to get into Iraq and kill Iraqis? I think this cries for full investigation into this. Uh, speaking not of the past but of the present, here is another thing he tweeted that concerns Iraq. He said, I quote him, Iran is rapidly taking over more and more of Iraq even after the U.S. squandered three trillion dollars. Um, so he's saying Iran is rapidly taking over Iraq more and more. What's your response? Well, the United States hasn't been spending anything on Iraq for the last six years. So I think he's talking about history now, what has happened since 2003. Now this as well, I think, needs investigation. Now dismantling of the Iraqi state, dismantling of the Iraqi army, dismantling of everything in Iraq, when Iraq was placed under occupation uh, through the Security Council resolution for the US. I think this need, the cries for investigation, why that happened. Now, I think, I, I know there is enmity between the United States and Iran, which dates back to 1979, revolution of Iraq. Iraq has no party to this. We are bordering Iran. Iran is the, we have the longest border with Iran. Iran is our neighbor. The mostly populated areas in Iraq, if you look at the map of Iraq, are bordering Iran. But what about taking over? He's saying it is taking over, essentially saying, you know, that you and others are under the influence of Iran. He's saying this bluntly. Well, he didn't say that. If that's what he meant, I grossly would disagree. And we Iraqis grossly disagree. Uh, Iraq is a sovereign country. It should be, I think, uh, I call on the president administration to look back on the framework strategic agreement between the United States and Iraq. Iraq has called on the United States uh, after Daesh moved into Iraq. This is by previous government uh, in 2014 for the United States to help Iraq in fighting Daesh. And the United States has responded in that by sending advisors and help to Iraq to, to fight terrorism. Uh, we have good neighbor relationship with Iran, but this is not against the United States. And we are calling for help from the United States against terrorism, but this is not against Iran. You said earlier, to come back to your conversation with uh, Donald Trump, uh, he committed more support. What do you want from him? What exactly does Iraq want from the United States in terms of support? We know that his defense secretary is designing a new strategy against ISIS, both in Iraq and Syria. What, but concretely, you're saying you need help. What help do you need? This is an international terrorist organization, ISIL, or Daesh is carrying uh, a bombing, terrorist bombing attacks inside Iraqi cities, in Europe, in America, and other countries. It has an international network of support uh, of suicide bombers, uh, of volunteers, is still receiving from abroad financial support. This has diminished slightly. The suicide bombers has been slowed down, but still is coming. I say, uh, I'm saying there are suicide bombers and terrorists coming from almost 100 countries in the world. We need support cooperation in combating this terrorist organization. We Iraqis on the ground, we are fighting Daesh. We are fighting it very hard with a lot of sacrifices. 
And I think we are, we are the most country who suffered from the terror of Daesh or ISIL. And we are doing it on the ground. We need all the support possible. But well, what's all the support possible? Financial, well, we, weapons, well, concretely. Yes, if you had yes. a wish list for Donald Trump, what it's would you ask? A, a training of Iraqi security forces. We are restructuring our army, our security forces. We started. But that's that. already happening. Yeah, we started two years ago. We want to continue with program of training for the next NATO four, five years. NATO is going to start doing so. Yes, we've asked for NATO. NATO would were providing training outside Iraq. We've called upon NATO to do it inside Iraq, and they've been very positive. And the US is doing it as well with the other international partners. We very much welcome this. We want this program to continue because we want to go down to training local police in, in the Alambar, in Nainawa, and other areas, even in other governorates. And number two is logistical support in terms of arms, in terms of equipment, in terms of other logistical support for our military, and third, intelligence. After this, another three, three months ago, probably we don't need this uh, umbrella of uh, air, air fighter planes to bomb position of Daesh because we'd have crushed Daesh militarily. But we need intelligence. This is an international terrorist organization. We don't have this capability of following up in other countries. We need this intelligence. We have very much, we have a lot of expertise in fighting Daesh. And I hope the, 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 this administration recognized the importance of Iraq in fighting Daesh and work very closely with Iraq. Uh, going back to Iran, you probably are hearing uh, some call it drums of war, maybe between the U.S. and Iran. Since D Donald Trump is sitting in the Oval Office, we've seen an uptick in declarations. Iran is the biggest state sponsor of terrorism. We don't like the nuclear agreement. It's a terrible uh, deal. Are you concerned? How concerned are you about this uptick in tensions where you've seen Tehran respond? And obviously, if tensions grow be between the U.S. and Iran, the main theater where uh, those uh, tensions could spill over is just right here in Iraq. Of course, we're alarmed of any tension in the region because this is going to be reflected on ourselves. Uh, any tension will take the emphasis away from fighting terrorism and Daesh to somewhere else. Uh, but to be honest with you, we have been seeing this for the last 15 or 17 years. So you're not that worried? Well, yes, there's always been Trump of wars in the 2003, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, for a long time until this nuclear agreement between Iran and the United States. And uh, I think this has got nothing to do with us. This is between Iran but and... it might have an impact on you. Yes, of course. Any tension, we, we dislike tension in the region. Uh, I want to get to the, the situation quickly with Turkey. Uh, obviously, there have been tensions uh, between you, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, about a military base uh, Turkey has in Iraq, in Bashika, uh, you said they need to withdraw. Iraq is a sovereign country. We don't want this base. It hasn't happened. Will it happen? And if so, when? Well, it's happening. The level of... Uh, the Turks are moving well, out? the level of Turkish troops has been uh, decreasing. Uh, if you look at the base now, uh, it's almost non-existent. It's under the control of Iraq security forces from all over. Because uh, when we've been talking about this a few months ago, there was no Iraqi forces in, uh, in Nainoa uh, governance at all. Now we are controlling all that part where Bashika is. Uh, so I think uh, the, the threat in that area has diminished. I think there is a, a very better understanding between us and the Turks. We are very eager to establish neighbor, good neighbor relationship with Turkey. We have extended our arms. They have been very helpful. Uh, the Prime Minister came to here. Uh, it was very cordial, the relationship. We talked frankly about what happened. I think they've got their own problems, whether at home or abroad. They want to mend, mend their relationship with their neighbors, and we welcome this. Uh, we are calling, I think if you now observe the media and the statements, I think there is a new relationship between Iraq and Turkey. We are very much welcoming it. So you're, when will the last Turkish soldier leave Iraqi soil? We've been promised this is going to be soon. Very soon. Uh, I, I want to quickly to get to uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, there was a Saudi ambassador briefly here who withdrew. Uh, there are still uh, tensions, obviously, uh, between uh, you and Saudi Arabia. Do you have any hope that they will improve? Obviously, this is also related to the tensions between Saudi Arabia and Iran. There is a, uh, now a Saudi charge that they have in, in Baghdad. Not it's an ambassador, uh, though. Well, he's, I think he is acting in that capacity as an ambassador. And we're still waiting for that to happen. We're waiting for the high-level uh, Saudi official to visit Baghdad. 
uh, to uh, further our relationship. There, there is a contact between Iraq and Saudi Arabia at the highest level. Uh, I think uh, its uh, relationships are warming up. There is a mutual interest between the two countries. Uh, I know everyone has reservation about certain areas. We should respect that. But I think the common factors are much more. Uh, we are facing the same enemy, who is terrorism. I think Saudi Arabia recognized the danger of Daesh, the danger of ISIL, especially after we are kicking out them militarily out of Iraq. They'll be looking for somewhere else to go. Terrorism will be an enemy number one to all of us, to Saudi Arabia, to Iraq, to the rest of the region. I think there is more at stake for us to cooperate rather than depart. I understand there is a problem between Saudi Arabia and Iran. A big problem. Yes, I understand that. I hope that tension, we can solve the tension in the region because this reflects badly on us. I wish that Saudi Arabia look into Iraq in a different eye. They shouldn't look into Iraq through the eyes of Iran. I think they are doing a strategical mistake in that. And I believe they are recognizing this and they're trying to mend it. Just a last question very quickly. Uh, Syria, uh, there was the fall of Aleppo. Do you think that this is a turning point in uh, the war? Do you think now that everyone, including those who wanted him to leave, realize that Bashar al-Assad is here to stay at least for a while? I think this is a turning point. But what uh, trouble me, troubles me is this, Eastern Syria. Eastern Syria, where Daesh or ISIL is there, and it, it, it seems to be overlooked. This is a very dangerous area. It's bordering Iraq. Now, we are at the moment, within probably the next three months, Daesh will be crushed militarily in Iraq. We'll be facing this challenge of Daesh and ISIL in eastern Syria. Now, we're working with the Syrian government, other regional powers, with the Russians, with the, I hope with the United States as well. How we crush Daesh in eastern Syria while keeping the Syrian state intact I think the defragmentation of Syria is a trouble for us, it's trouble for the whole region, because this will encourage terrorism. Syria must be kept intact, and terrorism must be fought in Syria. We would, we would want to see a sovereign government next door. We cannot deal across the border with fighting groups, with terrorist organizations, controlling the border posts with our neighbor. So what you're saying in a nutshell is that after Mosul, there should be very quick military action against Raqqa. We very much encourage that. Why? That's, and we are, capable, we are capable of helping in doing this. We don't want to intervene in Syria, but we have this capability. We can control the border. That's why the United States, we are waiting for the new administration to be effective in fighting terrorism in this region. Here is Daesh ISIL. We are about to crush it. We are doing a great job here but it's been unnoticed by the new administration. I hope it is noticed. By crushing the head, you'll kill the, 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 the tail as well. Uh, we, you, this is, Daesh was on the ascent. We are making it to go in the descent at the moment, and we should encourage this. The recruitment will collapse. Their propaganda will collapse. This is a critical moment in fighting Daesh, and I hope this new administration notice this very quickly before it is too late. Prime Minister Haider al Abadi, thank you very much uh, for uh, your time. Thank you for watching this exclusive interview here from Baghdad on France 24.